Hello. Welcome everybody again. This is um, Miguel Angel Figueroa. I am in charge of investments at the UNWTO. We are so happy to welcome you again. Um, good morning or good afternoon, wherever in the world you are right now. And this is our fourth uh, webinar that we are um, holding with the IFC. And this uh, webinar is uh, focused on great investments uh, strategies. And we are going to be wrapping up all what we have been uh, learning uh, in this introductory um, uh, topic. And we are happy that most of the, the people uh, keep uh, working with us and keep participating in the last four webinars. And that is really, really a good sign that um, the interest uh, that we are trying to develop here. And also, uh, we are going to give you some exciting news after, after the seminar, and we are going to look forward to work with you. Uh, I don't want to take more time. Uh, uh, Rosemir has a lot of things to cover today, so I will give the floor to Rosemir again. Thank you so much, Miguel. It's very, very exciting to keep uh working with this group and showing you all of our resources. So let's see if I share my screen and share the, oh. let's go. I have, I have a new office set up, so I'm still getting used to it myself. And I have to just change the settings. Okay, hope you can see this well. So thanks again to, uh, to Miguel. Very, very exciting, as I said, to, to continue um, working with everybody. Um, and as a reminder, this is the fourth webinar in, our CD, in a series of trainings that IFC is doing with UNWTO. The recording and materials from previous trainings are already available online, and we encourage you to look through them all. This webinar is also being recorded and materials will be shared in a few hours. During the webinar, please use the chat and Q&A feature to ask questions and we'll answer them at the end of the session. Let's do a quick recap of the topics we have covered so far. On the June 11th webinar, we looked at mechanisms for access to green finance. Throughout the exercise, we used the framework for carbon neutrality for hotels, which included one, super efficient new hotels, two, deep retrofits for existing portfolio, and three, a supply of clean energy, both on and off site. The financial pathways we talked about regarding the private sector were first through direct investments, second, partnerships via local financial institutions. So large banks and other development finance institutions like IFC can deploy credit lines for on lending. Third, we looked at aggregator models. I know many of you are interested in working with us on this. And finally, we talked about fundraising through capital markets. Then we looked at what governments can do in this space. Our technical pathways are the same, but the government pathways include, one, setting a minimum standard, particularly for new hotels, two, deploying incentives, both fiscal and non-fiscal, three, playing a role in financing, perhaps through aggregation mechanisms, and for creating an enabling environment. Besides the case studies we shared in our webinars and the more that I'll share today, we also pointed you to the paper IFC published with the International Tourism Partnership. That paper is a data-driven approach to sustainability in the sectors, which looks at six business cases for sustainable hotels. And the paper, as I said, and many case studies are available online. Today, we're going to talk about the tools that you can use for adaptation, for implementation. The topics will include overview of the EDGE program and the demo of the EDGE app. We'll talk about how EDGE answers the needs of the hospitality industry and how you can utilize the certification process. We'll also talk about the uh, IFC's new tools on building resilience. And we'll talk about how to get trained and accredited as a technical expert. Let's get right into the introduction to the EDGE program. Throughout the whole exercise, we talked about the definition of green buildings, meaning that the building needs to be certified as green, verified by a third party, have a 20% better performance in the local baseline, 
and have quantified impact reporting. Notice here that IFC's own definitions don't say the building needs to be EDGE certified. We simply say that it needs to be certified by any international or local standard. Even in IFC's own investments, we will gladly accept other internationally recognized certification. But we believe that EDGE has a unique offer, especially for emerging markets, because of its data-driven approach to green buildings centered around financial decisions. As a reminder, EDGE is aligned with international green finance criteria, including investor-oriented associations, such as the International Capital Markets Association, and the Climate Bonds Initiative. And we also work with real estate bodies such as GRESP and disclosure platforms such as CDP. EDGE stands for Excellence in Design for Greater Efficiencies. And the program consists of three components. First, the free software helps you choose the most cost-effective ways to build green. Second, EDGE is an achievable green building standard with a 20% resource efficiency criteria. And third, EDGE is a certification system to verify and reward green building projects through a green label. The EDGE software is first of its kind in the world. The complexity of the application is hidden beneath the user interface, making it easy for you to cut back on the resource efficiency of your building design. EDGE certification is possible for new and existing buildings and for a variety of typologies. I listed this here because I know that many of you work not just in the hotel industry, but in other sectors as well. Multiple projects can also be certified with a portfolio approach to transform a company's business model and maximize profits. Here, I also give you a preview of the case studies which we have on the EDGE website and which can be used as a proof of concept. And once your project is certified, we will use it in marketing. Again, I list examples from not only hotels, but other sectors as well, to illustrate that edge can be used for all types of buildings and for both for new and existing buildings. Here is where edge is a little bit different from other certification standards. We focus only on three categories of resource efficiency with a, an achievable minimum threshold. To reach the EDGE standard, a, project's, a project must reach 20% savings in energy use, 20% savings in water use, and 20% less embodied energy into construction materials. And this is the key, as compared to a local baseline. So what does this mean? First of all, the 20% standard was selected as a, as a tipping point for credibly green interventions. We considered it a tipping point beyond normal improvements. And this was an average of standards that our industry specialist compared at the time across leading national and international green building certifications. Now the 20% cutoff has become consistent with international guidelines for green finance as most development finance institutions are converging to the definition of 20% resource efficiency. One of the questions we received was comparing the EDGE 20% requirement against the International Energy Agency guidelines that current building stock improve by at least 30%. It's important to note here that we are comparing two different things. IEA guidelines say that current buildings must improve by 30% from their current levels. However, EDGE sets the baseline for new buildings that means that even current buildings must improve by 20% from the baseline of new buildings. You will see in just a minute how we have set the baseline and how we plan for the baseline to improve. But this is a, a key one for all of you with existing portfolio is that you will be compared against new buildings coming on the market. IFC has calibrated the edge baseline for local climactic and economic conditions. The baseline includes regulation, if such exists, or sector-specific local construction practices. For example, a hotel will have a very different profile than an office building. We have also calibrated for economic tier. A one-star hotel will look different than a five-star resort. 
If you're working beyond the hotel industry, a low income housing apartment will look different from a high income house, which is likely to use more energy and water. I've seen invested quite a lot of um, quite a lot of funds on data gathering on embodied energy for emerging markets. We believe that the edge database is at this point at this point the best in class global resource for baseline setting. The baselines were created through a stakeholder consultation process. This included our edge experts, local green building councils, and comparisons with existing buildings through simulations. In some countries, such as China, IFC collaborated with local governments and academic institutions to further test the system. As a result, for example, in China, EDGE can be used as a pathway com for compliance for China's own three-star system and is approved by the Ministry of Urban Housing on the recommendation of their technical university. In other countries, such as South Africa, EDGE underwent a technical working group review convened by the Green Building Council of South Africa. In our modeling, we compared EDGE with other software applications and with existing buildings. Any deviations were found, found to be within acceptable levels, as much as simulation uh, software packages deviate between each other. Remember that our baselines are public and our methodology is public. You can put your own building through EDGE software and find out the baseline for your country and then see how your project matches. It is not a book of baseline information, but it is a dynamic baseline that is created based on your building conditions. All edge certified projects do protect natural resources and they, they do save on operational expenses. But edge advanced and zero carbon are opportunities for builders, developers and owners to aspire to even higher levels of certification. EDGE supports the ambitions of Architecture 2030 and the World Green Building Council for new buildings to be zero carbon by 2030 and all buildings to be zero carbon by 2050. Because of that, we introduced some new levels called EDGE Advanced and zero carbon. But again, we're very data driven. We know that EDGE Advanced is at least a 40% cutoff for energy efficiency and zero carbon means 40% uh, onsite efficiency with additional energy provided either on-site or off-site through purchasing of renewable energy. If your project meets or exceeds the standard, it can be certified for a modest fee, and I'll go through the certification process in just a little bit. Let's go through a demo of the EDGE app and show you exactly how this works. You've heard me before that all of our resources are available from edgebuildings.com. This is our landing site where all of this information um, is kept. And the Edge app is available from here and it will just open up a new, uh, a new uh, panel. I was talking to uh, Miguel, which country to pick? And I realized that behind me, I have a beautiful uh, picture of, from Cambodia. So today I'm using Cambodia in my own hopes of being able to travel very soon around the world. And you can see I'm choosing hotels here and I have picked a four star hotel. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pick first an existing building. And you can see that some new fields pop up here as well. You don't actually have to worry about a building utility data. You can do this exercise even without the data for, for your own building. But we encourage you to fill it in as much as possible because it allows IFC to calibrate the information. I'll start with the materials first. For an existing building, you would actually do a reuse of materials. So right here, if I pick reuse of existing floor slab, and I'll probably do a reuse of roof. But I can choose in my process whether my external and internal walls are being kept as is or they're actually going to be uh, refurbished. So let's say if you're keeping some portion of your internal walls, maybe 50%, the rest of it can be uh, reuse of existing walls for the other 50%. I lost it for a second. Oh, it's meant to turn off. Okay. 
There we go. And you can see that with that, I have now reached my um, edge standard for materials because I'm obviously an existing building with materials is better than building a new building because I'm saving on the embodied energy of, of that information. Let's turn to water first because it's typically easier to do than um, energy. Here, you can see that edge has a color coded baseline. So it's telling me obviously my water is mostly going to be used on guest showers. Remember this is a four star resort. There's some um, water being used in water closets and laundry, some in the public area in my lobby. And then at the end is the kitchen. It is possible that your hotel already has internalized some of the resource efficiency strategies. For example, you already may have low floor shower heads and we actually want to reward you for that. So that means that it, if this is the case for you and you have low flow shower heads today, you only have to go 10% more. You don't need to go you know, 20% because you're being compared to other buildings that have not been utilizing um, this information and they're only uh, using high level shower heads. If I'm not really sure what this means and what is the baseline, I can open here information and see that the base case for shower heads is 12 liters a minute and the suggested improved case is eight liters a minute. If I need to know more information, I can click to more info and I will get the full user guide that will open up to the measure that I'm thinking about. The great thing is that for every single measure, at the end, you will see compliance guidance. So to every step of the way, you will know exactly what you need to upload um, in both the design stage and post-construction post stage. Obviously, this is an existing building, so I only need to worry about this. But if I have a new project that I still hope it will get online, I can actually get it certified even on design stage. And you can see that our compliance is very simple. We are just going to run some um, test flows and it's about photographs and purchase receipts. So we have really simplified the compliance to make sure that the cost of the paperwork does not get in the way of the cost of green technologies. I'm gonna go back here and say, well, you know, my shower heads were not eight liters a minute. You know, we were smart, but we weren't that effective. Maybe you had 10 liters a minute. And you can see here that you can override the information and still get the savings. And then I can keep growing. So now I'm at 5%, which means I have to go the additional 15% to get to my 20%. But there, you know, I can put aerators in my faucets in my guest rooms. It is possible that I can also, you know, for not that much money, replace the water closets in, um, in guest rooms. I can certainly, you know, do uh, water efficient urinals. And maybe I can do aerators and shut off valves in other bathrooms. And let's see, and then some of the other may include, you know, swimming pool co uh, cover or water efficient landscaping. So the idea here is that Edge lets you choose how to get there. We give you a menu of choices and you can see which of these strategies make the most sense for you to get there. So you can see here, we've reduced our, our showers, we've reduced our public areas, and we have now met the edge standard for energy, uh, for water. Um, I said the word energy because I'm also getting some boost on the energy side. It meant that because I had low flow shower heads, I am heating less water. So I am in fact getting some savings here. And now again, I have a menu of choices. Edge first and foremost uh, suggests passive measures. Um, but they are uh, formatted for, for new hotels. So if I was a new hotel, I could reduce my window to wall ratio. However, this is an existing hotel, so I'm not going to change my facade, and this is not an option for me. So you have to think a little bit about um, what is a new building and what is an existing building and how to get there. You know, for example, insulation of roof and external walls, again, is not going to be possible for me, and I'm probably not going to be replacing windows because that's going to be um, very, very costly. However, I might put external shading devices. I am in Cambodia, um, it's in the tropics, and this is something that could be very, very useful for me. And then I can see what else I can do. 
it's possible that I can now change my lighting uh, because uh, you can see that the, uh, uh, here, lighting is you know, quite a lot, it's about maybe 20, uh, 16% of the total energy cost. Lighting, interestingly enough, will go away as a green strategy. So come December, uh, LED lighting is going to become the baseline for all buildings because we are finding out that the cost of them has decreased so much. But for now, this is something that you could do and still get green certified. So here I'm going to uh, replace lighting. I'm going to put lighting controls. I'm going to put occupancy sensors in the bathrooms. These things are, you know, should not be that difficult for me nor costly to do. And with that, I have also reached the edge standard for energy. So you can see I have energy, water, and materials. They have all have check marks, which means that this project is now ready for certification. When I'm ready to upload information, it will be right here. This is where I would upload all the documents. And again, you will notice that for every single space, it will tell you exactly what you need. So here, it will be photographs of the lighting installation, as built electrical drawings and purchase receipts and delivery notes for lamps. So the, um, the interface will change for you, whether it's a new hotel or existing hotel, and it will show you that information. One of the things that we like Edge um, a lot is the calculation of incremental costs and utility cost reduction. It doesn't quite work for existing hotels, and I'll be very honest because it doesn't include the costs of you um, uh, tearing out the new, the old materials and putting in new ones. So this is a good indication for, for existing hotels where it is you need to be, but it's not going to be an, an exact amount. Um, for new hotels, a, this is a better prediction because it shows you um, the level of what you need to do and what will be your utility cost reduction um, in the end. So it is something that we are changing in the future versions of Edge. We will actually have a column here that is going to give you the incremental cost um, as predicted by Edge. And then you can put in your own incremental cost um, as uh, you know, uh, designed by your structural engineers and your other engineers. So you will be able to have a, an exact calculation that fits your, um, your information. We're pretty confident about the utility cost reduction because it's something that we have analyzed. So Cambodia likely high uh, electricity costs. And you can see here that with the 20% um, energy and water reduction, I'm saving almost $35,000 a month um, uh, for this particular property. That could be even higher because under the uh, uh, key assumptions uh, base case, we actually assume that only Oh, I, I, I did do that with, I put 90% of electricity generation is with diesel. Maybe I'll just I'll go back to five. Um, you can override the cost of electricity and cost of diesel and see exactly what it's going to be um, for you. So if you're in an area with an unstable grid, you can look at this information and you can look at the rising cost of electricity and basically use edge as a uh, simulation for future costs as well. If your property has a different um, breakdown than what Edge does, this is where you can override it in a design tab. So the beauty of Edge, again, is that you can use it for some basic simulation to say, okay, what, if, what is my um, overall cost? And then as you go through the certification process, you can start overriding these basic assumptions and put through information for your own hotel. If this had been a new hotel, I would have gone um, here and say, this is going to be a new building. And I, you know, I'm going to use this on preliminary. Let's see, let's do that you wish. Yes, making sure I'm saving all this information. I'm gonna say this is a preliminary design. And then I just wanna show you how the interface changes. Um, you saw my, the, uh, the documents for lighting. I'm now in the preliminary design and you can see that the, the interface for lighting has changed. Whereas in the post-construction stage, it was about photographs, receipts. This is now about drawings and lighting schedule. 
So the edge interface changes for you as the, uh, the stages of your building change um, with you. I can save this. I can share it with other um, uh, team members and I can even download the edge assessment, which is a snapshot um, of documentation that I can then start sharing with, um, with some of my team members. If this is not downloading for you, you probably have a pop-up blocker for Edge and you have to um, change it out. And at the end, you can see that it highlights only the measures that we selected. I think I'm certifying this project. And again, it's going to give you the checklist. One of the other things that we have put into Edge is whether to share this project with investors. So that is under project details. And you can see here, there is a button that says, do you share with investors and banks? If you select this as yes, it will allow your projects to be shared um, with the investors that IFC is working with. Now that we've covered um, Edge, let's go through the uh, understanding the Edge certification process. Edge projects, as I mentioned, can receive both a preliminary edge certificate at the design stage if they're a new project and final edge certificate at the post-construction stage for both a new and existing project. A building that is currently undergoing construction or has already been constructed obviously skips the preliminary process and goes straight to final certification. As soon as the certificate is issued, a project study is submitted for publishing on the Edge website and with uh, media coverage provided across Edge channels. The Edge logo and brand guidelines are also provided for investor and or sales promotion purposes. Zero carbon certificate is the operational certificate, which is approached after the building has a year of operational data and significant occupancy. Uh, the Edge certification or Edge advanced certification are asset certification. They do not need to be renewed and they are good for the life of the project. This is another way to view the roles in the certification process, including clients, edge experts and auditors, and the certifier. The speed of certification in this kind of roundabout way varies by the quality of documentation. It can be quick if the documents submitted are of good quality. We recommend that professionals working on the project submission be accredited as edge experts, whether they are an internal or an external resource. In most countries, you have a choice between two certifiers with two slightly different business models. GBCI is the operational entity of the US Green Building Council, which also offers LEED certification. They have a sliding scale that requires an independent auditor with separately negotiated fees. You can see here on this link where to find the auditors that are accredited around the world. The consortium of ThinkStep and SGS has a flat fee for projects with one typology where both the audit and the certification fee are included. So if you want to kind of keep it in your mind, think that about $10,000 per project is about the right price um, to have in your, uh, in your mind. And you can always get a quote well before you start your certification process. Edge is currently available in um, more than 170 countries. There are country specific pages on the Edge website where you can find relevant information for your market. Edge, as I mentioned before, is first and foremost focused on emerging markets because of the World Bank Group's mission. We're not yet available in um, Australia, North America, um, and some advanced parts of Asia. However, we are open to collaboration with partners who can help us get there. The process to calibrate edge for other countries is neither expensive nor cumbersome. It just requires the right partner and ring fence funds that are separate from our normal uh, World Bank Group pool of funding. Let's take a look at how you can get trained and accredited through IFC's partners. And this is sort of the last part of our um, training with UNWTO. 
Edge program has many ways to get trained as a technical expert. It is important to remember again that IFC is typically not the trainer, just like we're not the certifier. We have licenses through our certification uh, partners and training partners. Our training partners do have revenue sharing models. So for example, if you're an association looking to organize training for your members, IFC can help you establish a partnership with the training provi providers that also means revenue sharing for you. We encourage all listeners today to become accredited edge experts and offer services. This holds true for government officials who can provide technical assistance, consultants looking to deploy their services, but also uh, to building developers or owners who want to understand the edge software better. We remind you that the edge software is free and can be used for self-assessment and decision-making to understand what measures will bring best return on investment. There are three ways to get trained. Self-paced modules through online training are available at any time. These are five one-hour modules that you can take at your own pace. We also offer live stream training. There's live stream training happening this week and again in July. And we will follow up with you on how to register for live stream training in July, as well as the online training. This is uh, two half days where you will be able to interact with a live trainer and able to ask questions, but still taking the training remotely through the web connection. We have paused our local training for now during COVID, but we can look at restarting them in countries that have opened up their operations. We can also deploy bespoke training for groups and interested trainees available on demand. This can be done as a live stream or in person if the country is open. And as I mentioned, there is opportunity for revenue sharing with associations. I have gotten some questions from folks whether to sign up for online training or live stream training. It is really up to you and your own um, <clears throat> learning intake. If you like the self-paced process and the ability to watch videos, then online training is great for you. If you like to interact with a live person, a live trainer that can answer your questions on the go, then perhaps you can go through the live stream training. Both are available and are offered, uh, offered um, often. Trainees do need to pass the EDGE exam to be officially accredited as EDGE experts. Each trainee will get a certificate of attendance for their workshop. It takes a few weeks to study the user guide, but we have practice tests and helpful guides available online. The test can also be taken remotely through our partnership with Prometric testing sites. Once you pass the exam, you will be listed on the EDGE website. We will provide you with a certificate as well as branding guidelines to include the EDGE credentials in your email signature, business card, or LinkedIn profile. I hope you saw that EDGE is slightly different than other certification system. We believe it really offers value, especially for emerging markets but even in industrialized countries. Edge software calculates the incremental cost and return on investment for green measures. And this is a unique feature among certification system. Edge simplifies compliance by focusing on just three parameters, energy, water, and materials with a one-stop shop for the entire design and certification process. This leads to reduced processing as for example, loan officers from banks can rely on the EDGE certificate with easy reporting on impact metrics. EDGE has simplified reporting for financial institutions, developers, even governments, ensuring that you can get connected with global green finance flows where impact reporting is a must. Fast and cost-effective, EDGE makes green certification achievable for all, bringing international cachet to certify projects through association with the World Bank Group's brand, delivering value to both you and your clients. Now that we've covered edge and green buildings, let's also look at some of our um, tools for resilience and adaptation to climate change impacts. Disasters can be incredibly costly. IFC partnered with Georgetown University to research case studies 
of the most common disasters to understand what is really the cost per meter square of built property. We found that most common disasters such as floods, earthquakes, and cyclones can cost between $300 and up to $900 per meter square of real estate. Hotels, which are typically in coastal areas, are especially affected by natural disasters. However, all of these costs can be avoided. Investment in resilience today means avoided costs tomorrow. If the cost of damages are so great, why has resilience not been built into building design and construction already? We think there's many obstacles. There's lack of data to show the frequency of disasters or the cost of damages. Developers are too focused on perceptions of high incremental cost, just like they are with green buildings. Buyers don't have data to be informed. Banks are generally not focused on resiliency and have yet not, not yet conducted internal stress testing to understand how much of their portfolio is exposed to disasters. Governments may also pass building codes focused on resilience, but are likely not able to enforce them. All these factors leads to bureaucracy without an easy to understand connection between developers, investors, governments, and buyers. And that is why IFC launched the Building Resilience Index. Just like EDGE, this is a free tool that can be accessed from our website at resilienceindex.org. We're actively seeking feedback as this is only a pilot framework and we want to hear back from governments, NGOs, investors, and technical experts um, in this space. The Building Resilience Index is a risk assessment tool for the real estate industry. It standardizes and quantifies disaster risk, provides guidance to risk mitigation, and creates a disclosure system on adaptation and resilience to relevant stakeholders. The index produces a standardized letter grade of resilience that brings together all stakeholders from government to end buyers. You can see here the many benefits along the value chain for financial institutions looking to decrease their exposure to risk, to governments who want to encourage resilient construction and minimize uh, costs and lives lost, to construction developers who want to have a standardized way to demonstrate their risk assessment to financiers, insurers, and customers, and finally, for the, to the individual uh, users who want to understand their exposure to climate events and to quantify um, disaster risk. IFC partnered with the Innovate for Climate platform to launch our uh, Building Resilience Index. You can watch the demo and in the introductory video through the link below. As I mentioned, the uh, index is still in pilot stages and we're inviting developers, governments, associations, NGOs, and others to join us and to provide feedback on the system. I will show you a very quick demo of the system. You can see here resilience in the I have again uh, selected Cambodia. And right now, while the users have to self-report their levels of risk, our hope is uh, to work with data providers so that when the project select the project location, all of these fields pop up, much like they would do for um, Edge. And the idea is that as I'm going through and I am documenting that, this, that these risks have been mitigated by different parties, that's a civil engineer, I can actually get um, a standardized level, le a letter of resilience after uploading my documents um, here. And if the project is green certified, I can even get up to A+. So these are standardized uh, uh, letters that we developed with our World Bank group colleagues, A, B, and C, and R, which has the highest risk. Let me finish with a few thank yous uh, to make sure that we have a lot of time um, for questions. So we do want to thank all of our donors who have generously supported IFC's work um, in this space and ability to launch all of our resources for free. And I will again end with a call for next steps. We want to make sure that you receive technical training for either your staff or your consultants. And again, there's uh, technical training available online through self-paced modules 
and then again in July for uh, live stream training. When you hire consultants, make sure that they already are, are accredited by EDGE and knowledgeable um, about IFC's resources. There is a list of all of them um, available on our website. We have many marketing materials which you can utilize and as well as the case studies that we have developed for your proof of concept conversations. Make sure you're utilizing banking or government incentives present in your market or use them as a next step to, to launch incentives where you work. And finally, we want you to work with IFC on regional platforms and express your interest for investment. So I will stop there and we can uh, head back and look at questions now. Thank you so much, Rosmir. <clears throat> okay, so I had some problems with my computer. Sorry about that. Um, okay, just first, uh, thank you so much. That was very comprehensive and it's really powerful. Um, just to, to be super clear, the, um, this is just a platform and there is no obligation for, you know, for certification and we are not trying to make a commercial call or anything, <laughs> just to be <laughs> clear as well. But of course, it's very, very important uh, to have these standards and these tools in order to improve, you know, like the sustainability in the, in the hotel industry. Uh, saying that, uh, also after this uh, pandemic, there is uh, a lot of concerns regarding the, the consumers and the behaviors, right, after, you know, the the, the lockdowns and, act, uh, and given the fear that is for traveling. So there's a high, high demand based on the studies that we have, for instance, regarding investments that the new consumers for the next 10 years are looking for uh, services where they can add value and they also wanna be responsible for the consumption of, of the services that they're producing when, when they travel. So this just to say that this is a nice opportunity to actually first uh, uh, accomplish the, the standards that, that are important in this time, and also to improve uh, the, the brand equity uh, for your hotels. And of course, uh, it's very important for the funding mechanisms because once we or you are certified with these kind of accreditations, um, is, is there's more chances to get more uh, uh, financial mechanisms. So just to jump into the, the questions, um, there's a lot of questions and I would, I, I would try to, to, to gather some of them, which are very similar, for instance. Um, uh, okay, for instance, it says, do I need to be a technical construction professional or, an, or like an architect or an engineer to be certified for the EDGE program expert? You don't, and you know, I am not an architect my, myself, and I'm able to undergo the training. Um, we do check to make sure that you know you have some relationship to the building industry, but it is uh, it's totally fine. Um, Edge was Edge was designed to really be able to be utilized by people who are not you know technical experts. Obviously, I will make sure make sure that an architect is designing a building, but the compliance part for for the green construction, we wanted to make sure that that was really uh, uh, achievable to all. Yeah, uh, there's similar to those uh, those questions. Uh, then it says like, what is the process and what's the cost of the certification or accreditation in this case? So for the accreditation um, as an expert, the um, online classes are $150 um, each, uh, you know, whether it's live stream or, or online. And then the, the cost of the test is $100. So again, we think it's not something that is, that is prohibited, prohibitive uh, to folks. If there are associations who want to launch um, this training and have a you know, listserv that we can access, we have a revenue sharing program. And so we can share some of that um, revenue um, with those associations who will help us uh, uh, communicate the information. Yeah, and I don't know if you can expand in, like, remember when you told me, like, in another conversation that if there is already hotels that are trying or planning to certify or, accredit, uh, or to be accredited down the road, they can actually sponsor, let's say, some of the consultants themselves, and they can actually uh, save money by doing that, right? Absolutely. So the edge experts, as I mentioned, can be an internal service or an external consultant. Um, and we have had government officials, bankers, um, as well as you know the staff of the developer be trained 
and accredited as, a, um, as an edge expert. Okay. SGS and ThinkStep, the, one of the consortiums I mentioned, offer a 10% discount on their certification services to projects that have a edge expert. So if you're hiring an external one, you just pass that money you know, to an external consultant. But if you have an internal expert, you basically keep that money uh, for yourself. So that's at least $1,000 that you can save um, by having a, 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 an in-house edge expert. Yeah, and it's important to say that this is like a self piece, right? You can actually do it in your own time because they're asking uh, like if there is some local accreditation centers all over the place. Everything has been online for a long time. And I think that that's, it makes it, uh, we have been prepared for COVID for a while. Um, so you'll, you'll notice that I mentioned that we pause the, the in-person training. We, we typically do those as well. We have moved just about everything online. The self-paced modules are available to you at any point. You can sign up today and start working on them. And there's no time limit. You can do it over the course of a month if you want. Live stream training, there was one this week. There'll be another one in July. And that is uh, two half days. And then you can study at your own pace and you can sign up for the test. The test is also online. So the entire process doesn't require you to go anywhere. There's no test centers or, or, set, or accreditation centers that you need. And we, we covered this before, but I will read it just to be faithful here. It says, would you like, oh, can we certify uh, cold uh, guest houses or beds uh, and breakfast in the tourism sector with this uh, edge certification? Yes, I mean, I think we, ha we have been saying if it has walls and a roof, edge can certify it. Um, if it's not the, you know, if it's not there in the edge tool, um, call us back and, you know, we can develop something for you. We've done airports and stadiums in sort of on a, on a bespoke, bespoke model, but for um, hotels, we can do resorts, hotels, um, uh, service departments. And then if you, depending on how you think about it, student housing also, it can be either a hotel, if you're providing furniture or uh, it could be done more of a home where you know, students bring their own furniture. So we have a whole range of, of product possible. One of the reasons I think we, we really push edge is that the self-assessment part is free. So to go to Miguel's point, you know, even if you don't choose to go through the certification process on the commercial side, the tool is very useful to you because mm -hmm. you can access it for free and go through you know, understanding where is your best um, return on, on investment for both new and existing hotels. We think certification helps because if you heard you know, from the other conversations, it helps you access green finance. So it's kind of like might as well go the next step and invest a little bit more and then have your hotel be available to access green finance. Perfect. Another question, it says, do you have any problems of some consultants might be engaged outside their homeland uh, to be accredited or to- accredited? Perfectly fine. Edge experts are a global resource. They don't have to live in the country where they operate. And I think that's true now where so little work is actually done in person, so much is being done remotely. And so, you know, they can, can be a sort of a regional center of expertise and cover anything globally. Yeah. There's another one more technical. It says, I am already a lead audit uh, with a ISO schemes. Can I already become a, an auditor with this program? Yes. So the, you can become an edge expert at any time. Auditors are a um, little bit less frequent because we sort of want, you know, fewer auditors, more consultants. We want to kind of push projects in. So mm -hmm. GBCI and some of the other local uh, folks have a about once a quarter process for auditors to become uh, trained. But edge experts is, a, is an area that we, that we have open. There's no limitation on numbers. Okay, there, we also covered this question, but it says um, for refer, uh, refurbish uh, constructions, uh, can we use the, the standards? And also can we access to green finance if we are refurbished, I mean, a refurbished construction, refurbish? Yes. So remember, I started the demo with the existing buildings. And the idea there is that you would, for materials, you would choose a reuse of materials. Then you will take a look at to say, well, you know, maybe there were some strategies that we employed. Um, uh, I have worked, for example, with Radisson hotels and a lot of their hotels already pushed the envelope in Africa 
and would be able to meet the edge standard because you know they were very proactive, especially on the water side. I know that's one of the areas that, that we looked at. Um, and so if you already had incorporated the strategies that others didn't, we want to reward you for that, you know, so that the idea is that you don't have to go further um, um, than that. So you'll take a look at what did you already do and how much more um, do you have to go forward? And as I said, out of the menu of choices, you have to just be smart, right? You're not gonna change ins insulation probably during your refurbishment, but you can put in external shading, aerators, you know, maybe new HVAC and others. So there's just a little bit of, of kind of mindset of I've, uh, Edge gives you a menu, you choose what's the right choice for you. Some in interesting question. It says at what stage in the design process do you issue the design certification um, if there's an, any scheme on the design for the construction documents? Let me answer that in two ways. So people sometimes ask, at one point should I use Edge? As soon as possible. So Edge itself, start utilizing as soon as you can on design, you know, use the, because I think it's going to really help you change your design. The certification should start when the design is pretty much finalized because you will have to upload you know, design documents, sketches and others into the system. So, and because um, uh, post-construction certification will check that what you said at, on the design has actually been implemented. You know, so you don't want to be at you know, 20.1 having changed something and then realize that in the post-construction stage, you wouldn't pass the, the certificate because the preliminary certificate does have an expiration date. We give you three years we can extend it if needed, but you get three years to convert your preliminary, which is a, a certificate to the final one um, on, on post-construction. There's another really good question. It says, uh, would we get other credits if we already have a certification with other uh, accreditation companies in order to receive credit towards the edge certification? And so this is, this is where EDGE is extremely different from other certifications. We don't work on credits. We work on building physics calculations. So you do have to put in you know, your, your, your project through the, um, through the software and see you know, where it matches. There have been projects that did dual certification at the same time or sort of use their documentation, for example, for LEED to submit to something else. Um, so Johnson Controls in China, their headquarter offices went for LEED and EDGE at the same time. Um, the World Bank Group offices first in, in Kenya first got LEED, and then we decided we, you know, we really needed to model EDGE as, as the right behavior, and so they went through a recertification re process using EDGE. So it is not a credits transfer, it is a building physics data-driven calculation, which is very, very different in the way that the software is working. Yeah, and also you mentioned that the, the standards are very, very robust based, based on other accreditation, you know, that is out there. Exactly. Okay, then there's another one, I think if you mentioned this, I am not sure, but it says, um, as was mentioned, uh, the operation for the certification has to be in 70% occupancy. Uh, what happened if, if we don't have that occupancy? So this is a, yeah, uh, we haven't really answered it for hotels now. So I think that's the one we have to revisit. I don't wanna give you an answer because we, we, we designed it for kind of like normal operations and that's a little bit different. Whoever asked that, you know, please reach out to me and, and it's possible that we develop some guidelines. Uh, zero carbon is an operational certificate. You know, mm -hmm. we want to really show that you're matching your consumption of energy um, with, the, with the provision of energy through renewables. Um, when we launched it, obviously, we didn't plan for these buildings to sort of lie low for so long. So it could be something that we need to rethink. We do have a remote audit process. Um, so for, for countries where, you know, operations are still not up, uh, someone from the building team can go through a remote audit and even do a post-construction, you know, existing building audit remotely. But we haven't really thought about the occupancy rate yet. Yeah, I think from a financial perspective, uh, if the assets, they don't have that much of occupancy, something is wrong from the, from the location or from the design of the project, right? Well, obviously now with COVID, you know, so, so yeah, much of offices course. and hotels yeah, are, are shut down. In this down. case, correct, yeah. yes. 
um, what what is the process in order to get the certification? Like, can you walk us through it? Sure. Lo so much of it is on the um, Edge website from our certified pages. Maybe I can I, mm -hmm. I can share my screen again. Um, if you go to the Edge um, Edge page, literally the first thing you see is a certify a project, and you know one of our first recommendations is to get a quote to really understand um, what it is that you need to do. You know what will be your your finances. We have a lot of info why to certify and, and we actually have a training video of how to register your project and how to start um, uh, uh, uploading the information. So you want to have your, your designs uh, finalized or your construction finalized, then you can get a quote and then start registering your project and we have tutorials for that. And this is under the certify pages here. If you need to check pricing, and others, obviously, I think get a quote is, is the best way to do it. This is where you can hire an expert. And then if you want to check the pricing in your country, and if I want to you know, make sure that Cambodia is offered, I can go here. And again, I will find the information for that particular country. So this is all that info there. So everything is on the certified pages. Yeah, there's a really, really interesting question that I never thought about it. It says, in the case that you have heritage buildings, uh, can you certify them? Like, how do you deal with that? We can work with you. I mean, I think it's a question of what is, what is, what are you able to do? Um, you know, many of the heritage buildings, you probably cannot sh change the facade. There might be some things you're able to do inside. And it's something that our technical experts can help you. As I said, we have done kind of these bespoke certifications for some projects and we can worry on that as well. Perfect. I think, uh, oh, there's another one that's, I didn't cover. It says, can you provide this uh, certification in another language, in French, for instance? Yes, so um, the Edge software, and, and I think there's a lot of other questions on, on finances. Let me cover two things. Um, and I should have done it when I was doing. So the Edge software and the website are available in multiple languages. So if I go here, you can see that, uh, and this is the same for user guides. We have them in Spanish, Bahasa Indonesia, Chinese, Portuguese, Vietnamese, and French. And we're working to add others um, as well. Um, there was a whole question I think I saw on finance. So another reminder this, and we covered this a little bit in the um, access to green finance. IFC has an entire marketing toolkit that really will help you um, better brand your project. So we, this is how we coach you on, you know, how to issue a press release, how to do social media, you know, how to make sure that that edge is included in your sales strategy. And remember that as you're going through your project, if the project is, uh, if you're, you know, going through the certification, you can click here in your design and say, do you, do you want IFC to share this project with other investors or banks? And if, if you click yes, we will we work with regional banks and we send them this information. And sometimes we would you know be interested in, in um, uh, investing in the project ourselves. So this is the important one to click off. So both kind of very very specific here to share with investors, and then more broad on how to do marketing uh, more generally. That's available from the bottom of the website under the marketing toolkit. And this is also, you can see our, our technical updates are here too. Good. I think it's, we cover all, I mean, most of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I just wanna also be super clear about the next steps. Um, since we have such a big demand for, for, for the program and because we are promoting and cross promoting these through different channels, uh, what I will do is I will uh, sort and kind of uh, classify the, the concept, concepts that we have in aggregators, like uh, investors and governments and officials. So uh, we can actually offer them what are the options? Because for instance, there are some governments that wrote us back saying like, how can we create incentives? Can mm -hmm. you help us with that? Other people wrote saying like, we are already investors. We have different mm -hmm. hotels. Can we get certifications as we speak? They are writing the emails. 
And the other question was, uh, in this case, I'm taking from the other webinars, um, there are different hotels that maybe are small and can we gather them in a cluster and can we apply together since we are in a small country or we have different uh, uh, small investments for hotels, uh, you know, that are kind of small in size. Um, that's kind of what we are, uh, that's the, 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 the first <laughs> objective of these webinars to, to help to create these, these, these market, these, these opportunities. And actually we will send an email uh, in different uh, segments. So you have to bear with us. Um, the second thing that is super important is that we are going to send as we are sending the, the mailing with the, uh, the dates uh, for the accreditation. So you have to uh, bear in mind that it will be an accreditation kind of webinar. And if you're interested, everything will be um, uh, specified in the email. Um, but we'll be sending you that information so you don't have to do it. Uh, I mean, you also can do it on the website as well. <laughs> um, and then based on that, we are going to work as well with the IFC and the, the other team that is based with the, I mean, that is more focused on the project development, right? And we are going to identify first this potential pipeline of projects that they might be out there. So we will contact them and we will have kind of like a first uh, approximation to see where they are they are at and then we are taking from there as well great yeah and we have you know many colleagues around the world so it won't necessarily be always me working on resources mm -hmm. there i know we're getting messages from costa rica from east asia we will be deploying different edge uh, colleagues uh, we work on advice giving and we have investment colleagues who will help actually process the the investment whether it's a direct investments or helping to set up these regional platforms that we've talked about Perfect. So we'll be sending you another email about that. Um, I don't know. That's everything from my end. Rosemary, thank you so much for this series of webinars. It was really, really comprehensive. Uh, I think and I believe it's something that we actually need in the sector. And I feel like there is a lot of work to do, of course, after, you know, we overcome these sanitary issues, I think we will come very, very strong. And from the emails that we received from the UNWTO and from our affiliate members, we are uh, very happy for the response that we had had uh, in this time. And also uh, there are different people from different uh, regions that are writing us saying like, can you do this in Spanish? Can you do mm -hmm. this in Africa? You know, can you do this? Um, I think we will be writing them to see like uh, and to plan and coordinate with you guys. Great. So thank you so much for everything. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure and we look forward to now doing the hard work. Now that we're all on the same page, <laughs> now the hard work yeah. is to actually implement it. But as I said, IFC has resources and tools and we can teach you how to get them, how to yeah, access and, them. And finally, also thank you for, for everybody. I mean, to everybody that have been part of this and you have been really grateful to us. I mean, gracious to us and we are really happy to serve you in any capacity. Great, thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye everyone.